President Obama's real strengths is that unlike that evil, two-faced George W. Bush, people actually believe the things that Barack Obama says. Do you remember that speech Barack Obama uh, borrowed from his friend during the campaign? Words matter. Well, they do, or at least they used to. I want to look at some of the words and compare them to something I like to call reality. Listen up. The way to make government responsible is to hold it accountable. And the way to make government accountable is make it transparent so that the American people can know exactly what decisions are being ma made, how they're being made, and whether their interests are being well served. Okay. Except they won't let the Fed's actions be transparent. Do any of us know what happened to the TARP money? Does anybody know how much money the Fed has? And then, of course, there's the pledge that the government wouldn't pass anything without letting everybody look in a bill for five days. Quote, uh, too often bills are rushed through Congress and the uh, president before the public has an opportunity to review them. As president, Obama will not sign any non-emergency bill without giving the American public an opportunity to review and comment on the White House website for five days. Here's the reality check. The biggest spending bill in history of the country, the so-called stimulus, was posted late at night and voted on the very next day. But maybe that was an emergency, because remember, Nancy Pelosi had to get to Rome and uh, Barack Obama needed to wait four days before he signed it. Remember, the president also vowed that there wouldn't be any lobbyist in this administration. If you are a lobbyist entering my administration, you will not be able to work on matters you lobbied on or in the agencies you lobbied during the previous two years. Okay. No lobbyist except for, you know, lobbyists like Attorney General Eric Holder, who was registered to lobby uh, until 2004 for a uh, bankrupt telecom firm. His Deputy, uh, Deputy uh, Secretary of Defense, William Lynn, who was a lobbyist for a defense contractor, Raytheon. At least 10 more people. I mean, talk about sticking to your guns. He's done it. Then your daily dose of irony today. Treasury Secretary Tim Geithner vows to go after t tax cheats. Listen to this one. It's not fair to people who pay their taxes for people to continue to have the ability to evade U.S. taxes by taking advantage of offshore tax havens and a range of other provisions in current law, which makes it makes it possible to evade U.S. taxes. I mean, how does this guy sleep at night? I mean, he cheated on taxes himself, as did several other Obama nominees. It, you know, it might be quicker just to list the ones who actually did pay their taxes. So what does all of this mean? Obama has been in office for less than two months, and let's just consider this the honeymoon period. But if, if, if he doesn't start to say what he means and means what he says, he's going to be in real trouble. Or will he? Will he learn the old adage, actions speak louder than words? Do they anymore? When are the words going to catch up to President Barack Obama? Frank Luntz is the author of Words That Work. Frank, I am, I am amazed by, really, both sides of the aisle. This isn't just Barack Obama. This is the Republicans as well. They can scream all they want about, do we have the tape of, uh, of uh, John McCain on the floor? Listen to this one. Here's John McCain on the floor of the Senate. $951,500 for a sustainable Las Vegas. What does that mean? I want to freely acknowledge that Republicans were guilty of this as well. I've said time after time, there's three kinds of members of Congress. Republican members, Democrat members, and appropriators. Okay. They're both doing it. They all say, oh, they're against this or that, but they don't mean it. Does this ever catch up to people, or do we just stop listening? It catches up to people when they actually start to engage and get involved. I gotta tell you, Glenn, that I've never seen since 1994 the anger, the frustration. The, the public is using words in my focus groups that I can't say on television or you'll end up with a half a million dollar FCC fund. <laughs> okay. That's how they feel. Okay, so let me ask you and this. I gotta tell you. Please, yes. please tell me this is on both the Republicans and the Democrat side. That it is. Well, I'm gonna okay. Glenn, I'm gonna surprise you. The Republicans are angrier at their Republicans oh, yeah. than the Democrats are at Democrats. Why the hell have the Republicans not said no more earmarks, not a few, not less, none? Okay, why? But, but, but you have, you have um, Barack Obama and the, the Democrats saying that we couldn't afford the war, we're, we're, we have too much of a debt. Do we have the Geithner money elf? Bring in the Geithner money elf. There he is, throwing money everywhere. I mean, now they're throwing money at everything. It, again, how does, do you have any gauge on 
how long you can deal in just blatant hypocrisy and get away with it. Because I think the Republicans are just ahead of the Democrats and their anger. Glenn, I, I can give you a, a, a scenario. Okay. They'll put forward one bill, and let's say it deals with crime. And in that legislation that has hundreds of billions of dollars, they'll have something in there for midnight basketball, $18 million, basically to get kids to go outside and play basketball at midnight instead of sleeping or studying for school. They'll have something in there, dance lessons for convicts. Convicts, it's a prison. Who leads? They'll have something in there for basket weaving. Right. Do you recognize the legislation, Glenn? Yes, I do. 1994, September of 1994, that legislation led to the American people saying, enough with the Democrats, okay. we're throwing them all out of but office. But who's going to do it? Because here, Frank, here's the difference. It now, I mean, look, Michael Steele, he went, he, first he went after uh, Rush Limbaugh, and then the next day he said, I didn't mean that. These people don't have a spine. Say what you mean and mean what you say. If you hate Rush Limbaugh, fine, you hate Rush Limbaugh. If you love Rush, Rush Limbaugh, you're fine, you love Rush Limbaugh. Just have the courage of your convictions. Say what you mean. And I, I mean, who's going to step in? You, I mean, are these parties even repairable in, in two years? They have to be. They have to be repairable. And they have to be repairable because the Americans have so little faith, so little confidence, and so much fear that if Washington fails them now after this much change, they will give up hope. And when that happens, you can have very dangerous consequences that we've seen in countries in Eastern Europe, that we've seen in countries in South America. Uh, if they fail us, if they don't say what they mean and mean what they say, and Glenn, you may not even know this, but that is the number one attribute that the American people want in their politicians. Not honesty, you know, not intelligence, not compassion. Someone who looks you straight in the eye without notes, says what they mean and means what they say. So you're Frank, dead on with this let, let, and let me no one's doing it. Let me just ask you this one question, then I know we got to get out of this, but let me just ask you real quick. I don't think the success of this show, and this show is being, I mean, it could end tomorrow, but it's being wildly uh, accepted by the American people. Um, and I don't think it's because people necessarily agree with me. They don't think I'm necessarily the smartest guy. They don't necessarily think that I'm right. But I, I think they sense that I'm actually saying what I believe. And Americans are starving for that. Don't give me a package, don't give me a focus group, don't give me words, just tell them, you can piss me off, but if you really believe it, I'm starving, I wanna say thank you.